what's going on guys let's have a little conversation i am entering my eighth week of the car rental business two months and i've seen some of your comments could you hire someone to do this and i've seen your comments you should only spend four thousand dollars for a car and I've seen your comments that you should do this, you should do this. And I respectfully will say that some of you actually have some good ideals and some of you are know what you're talking about. But the vast majority of you have no clue because there's this book, uh, I'm using this phone so I can't show it to you, it's called Rework. And it's a really good book about building a business. And you know one of the things in this book, it says, before you hire someone, you should do that job so you will know how to write up the job description and how to know if people are getting on over you. So essentially, um, we're just in phase two of the car rental business. Two months, let's go ahead and call it two months. We're, we're just in phase two. Two months is an incredibly short period of time to be in business. Incredibly short period of time. Like I have no expectations to even be pulling money out of this business for at least a year. And you know, depending on how some things go, it may happen a little sooner, but this is the expectation and building real businesses. And one of the things that you guys are a hit over the head with day in, day out, start a business, start making all of this money really, 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 really quick. And I have built, my first business was GC Solution, my first successful business. Because I had a lot of unsuccessful businesses because I was thinking like many of you, I'm gonna get this business and I'm gonna get this money. And only when I started my first business, which was doing something I was already doing, was I successful. And you guys have got to understand, you're not gonna start a business and you're not gonna start making big money instantly. It just ain't gonna happen. And I, I, I understand that you guys are literally hit over the head with messaging that you can start this business and make big money or let's not even say big money. Let's say good money. Let's say you're making $3,000 a month working your job and you go ahead and create this side hustle and you make 6,000, which will be double what you were making on your job and you quit your job in four weeks. That is even harder. That's harder. And what you guys are seeing me do is create a real business. I'm creating a real business. I got an office. I'm in my parking lot. Because I have people that's like, where do you park the cars? Essentially, I have four cars that are not rented right now. Four. And two of them are in the shop. If they weren't in the shop, they would be rented. Um, the goal isn't, I don't want this parking lot full of cars. The goal is to keep these cars out. Like this Range Rover, I had it a hundred bucks, didn't rent, moved it down to 90, didn't rent, moved it down to 80, didn't rent, moved it to 70, they rent it. A friend of mine has a consignment store and this is where I learned this strategy. They have a pricing model. What they'll do is put it on the floor for what the desired price that they want. Then if it doesn't sell within, I think, I think it's a week or two, they move the price down and they keep moving the price down until it sells. And one, the, this, this, this is a real business lesson because a lot of you guys, I know you're hungry. I know you want to experience success. I know you want to build a business. I know you want to get on generational wealth. I know you want to build something. And what I'm trying to show you by being transparent. Erica says she ain't abandoning the truck business. 
Uh, she may not be abandoning the truck business, but she has made a big mental shift in the truck business, which looks like abandoning the truck business. I'm just saying. But one of the things that you have got to understand, and I, I'll even speak on that. When you make money from the internet and you make pure, pure money, pure internet money. Now, what is pure internet money? When I sell an online course, that's pure internet money. When I write a book and I sell that book, that's pure internet money. YouTube is pure internet money, meaning that I don't really have to do more than whatever the thing that I did to make money. And it, it can be addictive. I, honestly, I have made more money on the internet than any other business I've ever had. Last year was a record year, banner year. And I was positioned because I've been on the internet from a pure internet money standpoint for 12 years. I've been making pure internet money for 12 years. And I have a background in making non-internet money out here and also, yes, the car rental business is full of um, hassles and garbage. And like, just someone hit me up today. It's like, hey, do you have an extra key? And I, and once again, I'm learning to communicate with these people. I was like, you know, because he, he feels that he locked the key in the car. And I was like, that's impossible. Because most of the keys, like, I cannot lock my BMW key in this car. I can't do it. If the key's in the car, when I go out and touch this thing, it will not lock. Because <clears throat> it knows the key's in the car. But <clears throat> my communication began. That's impossible. And do you know those keys are 700 bucks? Let them know immediately that if you lost that key, it's going to cost you 700 bucks. He's like, I'm looking for it. I will update you shortly. Because <clears throat> see... Like the, the first guy who lost the Range Rover key, who who still owes me fourteen hundred bucks, even though my pocket's fat. I got I can give you cash money. He still owes me fourteen hundred bucks because his pockets aren't fat. And <clears throat> I got to learn how to run this business before I hire someone to do this business for me. I know that's a strange concept in this world of fast money. You can do this internet tactic. You can do the. I'm actually building a real business, real business. And it looks strangely different than what these guys are telling you. There are some good YouTubers that are giving you some good advice, but I'm going to say and make the statement that the vast majority of YouTube content is garbage. The vast majority of it. And I had someone, uh, I'm, I made a video talking about lifestyle over at Savage Finance, and I had someone comment, and he said, I don't agree with everything you said, but this video is 100% on point. Four years ago, when I was financially struggling, I came to YouTube, and I Googled how to make 100 bucks a day, and after listening to countless YouTubers and trying to make the money, I made $0. Did this for two months, and he made $0. See, the game is, as I explained in that video, the YouTubers are putting out content to get you to watch it, not necessarily to help you, not necessarily to educate you. Uh, there's a guy, Car BNB, ATL. Uh, I should, you know, if I don't screenshot it, um, this guy has put out, this guy with his car rental business, in one week, he had a car stolen. He had three accidents. And that video got like five or 600 views. Going through his videos, he went through the same stuff that I'm going through. And he gets no views because he's telling you the truth. And a lot of people don't want the truth. Once again, it's car BNB here on YouTube. Uh, he hadn't made a video in like a year. And this is something else that I'm seeing. Uh, there was a guy, Justin Brubaker, who used to make hire car videos. He stopped making videos. <clears throat> I have a feeling he's no longer even doing hire car. And car Airbnb, he stopped making videos because he was putting out 
in my information, some really good information from my perspective. He was putting out some really good information. He was like, this happens. He's the guy that's like, you got to have two keys. Trust me, two keys will save you. That's where I got that from him. And, and, and also, if this guy indeed did lose the key, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to like, look, I'm coming to your location, but I'm going to need $700 from you to my PayPal account because I got to replace that key. And that's the only way I'm coming to you because like I'm learning how when people are careless or they do certain things, I'm learning how to get them. And like this guy, he's an adult. So I don't think I'm going to have issues out of him because I've already told him that the key is 700 bucks. The key is $700. So once again, one of the things that we're beginning to understand and we're beginning to appreciate is how to conduct this business. And once again, I've been doing it two months. And some of you are like, you need to do this. And I love the comments, you're paying too much for your repairs. All right, I'm about to be elitist here. Whenever my vehicle breaks down, like this vehicle, it has an extended warranty. So you know where I'm going? I'm going to the dealership. And once this vehicle slips out of extended warranty, my warranties, like the vehicle only has like 30,000 miles and my vehicle, my warranty's good for like 80. So I'm going to the dealership and I'm gonna get it fixed with OEM parts. This is how I conduct my business. I understand that I could possibly find someone cheaper, but here's the thing. The guys who work on my cars, typically, if I take it to them in the morning, I get it back that same day, except for this Mini, and the Mini's posing some problems. But literally, every time, except for the Mini, I've taken my car to them, they've returned it the same day. So not only am I paying for it to be repaired, I'm paying for it to be repaired quickly, because time is money. And once again, I could go ahead and find me some shade tree mechanic who has a job, who has maybe six or seven hustles. And i like, hey, my car's broke down. And he's like, it's Monday. And I can get around to it on Friday. So is that really cheaper? No, it's not. Because every day, give you an example. Uh, the Acura TL is at a shop. And the only reason it isn't fixed is they had to order the starter. And same thing with the Camry. Getting parts is a nightmare right now. Uh, they had a nightmare getting parts for the Camry. Uh, this guy's like the starter, have to order it. Also, Range Rover there. Someone returned it without the gas cap. I'm having a hell of a time finding a gas cap for the Range Rover. So finding parts for older cars in this current environment is very, very hard. And like, I'm, I've already put in my mind, I am trading out of that. As soon as I get the title, it's gone. Um, and also the Porsche. I had a feeling I wasn't gonna be able to get it this weekend because once again, depending on people to do their job on the weekend, come on, man, come on. So I already knew that it'll be tomorrow before I get the Porsche back. And so I already put the insurance back on it. And as soon as I get it, I'm going to trade that bad boy for two cars. It's gone because the Porsche, the Range Rovers, that's typically where I've had the majority of my problems. I've not had these problems out the Acras. I've not had these problems out the Camry. I had one yard bird keep the car and didn't want to pay for it. She was actually living in a hotel. And essentially guys, this is how real business looks like. Virtually any business you're going to start. Let, let, let's talk about YouTube. My first two years of YouTube were absolute hell. Back then, you couldn't do what you do now. I actually had to make a video, edit the video, then take that edited version of the video, run it through a software called Handbrake, 
and reduce the video some more because my videos that were produced by my software were too big to go on YouTube. So it literally took me eight to 12 hours to produce one video. My first two years on, and I went, I remember, I actually had a Toshiba satellite that when it was processing the video, it would get so hot, it would, and it would make this loud noise, ping, and it would turn off. And I could not use that Toshiba laptop until it cooled off. There's a video on this channel, how to clean out your Toshiba satellite, because I had to get uh, a mat, one of these little mat with fans in it, and I had to put it on the fan, and that actually helped solve my problem. Videos here on, you know, video got a lot of views because a lot of people are having the same problem. And then I went from um, the Toshiba to my first Mac, which I bought from a guy off of Craigslist. He lived over off Glenwood Park in these uh, apartment buildings that used to be a schoolhouse, and they converted to apartment buildings. And then I upgraded from that Mac, sold that Mac, then upgraded to another Mac. And at one point I had three Macs. I had a 17 inch laptop, a 21 inch and a 27 inch. And to this day, I've got two Macs. I got three Macs right now. I got two 27 inches and I've got um, one 16 inch MacBook Pro. And essentially, my first two years on YouTube was full of trials, tribulations, hassles, trolls. I mean, I almost quit YouTube. That's how bad it got. I almost quit YouTube. So with my storage auction business, same thing. With my new office furniture sales business, same thing. I lost $250,000 in my office, commercial office furniture business. There's a common theme here. Starting a business is full of headaches, hassles, trials, tribulations, and BS. That's normal. And I am one of the, I am, because I'm not the only YouTuber on here, because there's clearly someone else on YouTube who's talking about how to start a business for real and the process. And many of you are consuming content from multiple YouTubers. And if you're consuming a content diet based upon it's easy, you should be making money. Like someone put in there, I'm old school. You know, if my business ain't making a profit in the first quarter, Amazon did not make a profit for 14 years. Microsoft did not make a profit for 10 years. Apple did not make a profit for 10 years. Uber has still yet to make a profit. Uber hasn't made a profit yet. Tesla almost filed bankruptcy and Tesla's been in business almost 20 years. Tesla recently just made a profit. And I'm going to tell you why. And this is why I have capped how much money I'm putting in this business. Because let's let's say I threw a million dollars in this business, right? I'll be looking at three years to get my money back. About three years, maybe four. The more money, and this is why these, the Microsofts, the Teslas, the Apples, the Amazon took such a long time to become profitable because they consumed Billions, billions of dollars in startup capital. And this is why I have put a cap on this business and I work my numbers where I be become profitable within a year, which if you know business and you understand business is extremely fast. Starting a business from scratch, uh, probably I'm going to invest probably a total of 300,000 in this business. And I will start getting my 300,000 back in 14, about 14 months. Because essentially phase one was acquiring the cars. I'm not counting phase one and I'm not counting phase two. Phase three, which will start in either August or September 
will start my one year clock. Why? Because I had to run experiments. I had to get real marketplace data and I've discovered something by buying all these cars. I've discovered what works and what doesn't. And one of the things you guys have got to understand, you're not going to have microwave success. And this, 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 this is so hard to put to you guys because I know you guys are watching JT Automations. I know you guys are watching Raise the Entrepreneur. I know you guys are watching the Black Hustlers Co. For the culture! And all of these channels are designed to get attention. And once again, JT Automations, Raise the Entrepreneur, the Black Hustlers Cub, uh, Jay Rich. If any of these guys that you've been consuming their content has actually put money in your pocket, put it in the comments. Every video I do like this, I ask someone who's been watching these guys if they've actually helped put money in your pocket please put your testimony in the comments to be fair and no one ever does no one ever does you want to know why because they're not making any money from the content of these creators you want to know why because it's too quick uh the black hustlers club he's a young guy um i think he's cool he's cool and he's doing what young people do and I think JT Automations is a young guy. They're just trying to secure the bag. You you and your success, be damned. I don't care about you. I mean, just keeping it a buck. That's the reality. They don't give a damn about you. Uh, and essentially, I want people to be so successful that at times I've hurt myself because I forgot one fundamental rule. Most people don't take action how do i know i gave away free business courses a lot of people signed up and 95 percent of them never cracked open one course they had no investment they had no skin in the game nothing and this is why i will never ever give something like the other way again valuable lesson i actually hurt my business by doing that trying to help people for free People have shown me, once again, the marketplace is brutal. The marketplace is 100% honest and the marketplace is 100% selfish. And these people are like, hey, thanks for the free course, but I ain't going to do it because I got to work. I ain't going to do it. Literally, I learned that lesson. So anyone that comes at me, you just trying to make money. You damn skippy. Yes, I am. Guilty, 100% guilty. And you should be trying to make money because I've learned my lesson, you know, for, for the culture, for the culture, trying to help people for free, trying to like this young girl who rented my car. She's 22 years old and she ran over a pothole, blew out two tires and got ghost. I actually tried to help her. I was like, I'll rent you this Camry and you pay me a hundred bucks a week until this is paid off. She didn't want to do that. Now she cannot rent a car on hire car. See, once again, people don't know because essentially in this chick, she tried to get a refund. She go ahead, rent my car, blow out two tires. And because she don't have a car, she's trying to get a refund. A refund. And I mean, there was a moment where I could have got a little bit more money out of her, but I would have put my whole account at risk because uh, I was like, you can get the Camry and everything. And I could have started that rental, but she wouldn't have actually picked up the car. And that is fraud. So I would have lost the whole account. I would have lost the ability to make millions trying to get $127. So, I mean, you know, it was just like, I wanted to do it so bad, but I knew that I would put my whole account at risk. So I just went ahead and canceled it and moved on. And th this is one of the things. Many of you are too emotionally attached to stuff. Like this car right here, it's an employee. Its job is to go out and make me dollars. 
if my employee gets sick and needs to go to the shop and get some medicine, all right, I'll do that. But if someone's smoking weed in it, I don't care. If someone is speeding, as long as they don't wreck, I don't care. If someone's put, I bought these cars because I know people are going to drive them. I know people are going to put miles on them. I know this. And this is why I have a plan in two years to completely upgrade the fleet. Every two years, all the cars that I bought initially, because they're going to actually probably be older than two years, but I'm going to keep these cars max two years. Uh, the first 21, I'm probably going to keep two. Well, it, it kind of depends. Probably two years. At the two-year mark, I'm going to pull the car out the fleet. I'm going to put it on my buy here, pay here lot and blow it out. And essentially take that money, buy more cars. Because these cars will last forever. I got some cars. I already know that um, I'm going to have to sell them for like five or $4,000 because like the one Acura T, it already has 170,000 miles on it. In next two years, it's probably going to get um, maybe 30, 40,000 miles put on it. So that car is going to have 200 some thousand miles on it. But here's the thing. You know, you guys hear me. And once again, you keep saying your repair costs are too high. This is something that I've learned. A lot of people on hire car are not taking care of their cars. If they break, they don't take them to the shop. They just rent them out the way they are. And then someone else get it. Cause one guy told me he rented this car and it had problems. Then he actually saw this car on the side of the road. Cause he knew what it was. Cause it had lights and someone rented this car. Like right now, you know, you, you guys like your repair costs of too high. This is the cost of doing this business. Repair costs. As long as I buy used cars, I am going to have repair costs. This ain't going to never change. It ain't going to never go away. I feel that I'm going to have many months, six, seven, eight months, where I won't have a repair cost because every month, you know, you get to a point where, like, I had a car, my Audi, my Audi. With 2004 Audi S4, and it started messing up. I mean, the fuel gauge didn't work. One of the regulators in the window went out. Uh, it started doing all kinds of stuff, and I think it cost me like four thousand dollars to get it all fixed, to get everything fixed. And once I got everything fixed, it didn't break down no more. Three years after that, so essentially, yes, the repair costs are annoying. But I'm going to get to a point where I'm going to fix everything and it's just going to stop breaking down. And it's just going to run. And once again, as a conscious business person, I want to put out a good product. Like right now, this Range Rover with no gas cap, the check engine light is on. I don't know if the check engine light is on because it doesn't have a gas cap or is there something else wrong with it? And essentially, I'm going to bite the bullet, take it to the shop get it fixed and then i'm going to um keep moving because essentially i feel that that first credit card which took two months to get the bill that it got i feel that this month's going to completely pay it off or pay the majority of it off because it was a twenty five thousand dollar limit credit card and i have twenty thousand and one hundred and fifteen dollars available balance so the next two payments are 2000 and then I've got Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And whatever payments those will be, those will go toward that card. And I feel that that credit card will be paid off and I'm not gonna use it for this business anymore. And then the other credit card, I, I bought a phone the other day from Apple because essentially, once again, going back to setting up the business, I'm gonna have a dedicated phone for this business because that phone rings 24 seven. And what I'm gonna do is, this is my office here, Monday through Friday, I will carry that phone on me. And then Saturday and Sunday, and I'm gonna leave a message. Hey, thank you for calling Mac Daddy Autos. If you have a problem, we are closed. It will be addressed Monday. If you lost a key, you're gonna to have to pay for that key. If you if the car needs to be towed, because 
one of the things I've learned is like the girl who rented the Acura and when it went bad, this was like 6.30 in the morning. So if I want to have a life, I've got to put these protocols in, in, in the, in, into play. So Monday through Friday, I'll carry that phone on me. But at 6.30, that phone goes in the office and I'm not picking it up until the next day. So whatever calls happen in the middle of the night, whatever, and I'm gonna leave a message. just like, hey, this is Mac Daddy Autos. We're closed. If you have any problems or concerns, you know, I gotta think of the message, craft the message cor you know, correctly, and then they will be addressed the next business day. And essentially, it's the weekend. I have worked every weekend since this begun. And one of the things, which I already knew, from running Craigslist ads, people don't read long ads. I have our office hours in the office location in the ad for every car I'm renting. And a lot of people don't read that. And once again, a lot of people want to call, uh, they want to talk to me. Player, player. Hey man, I know you got all these rules and regulations, but I don't really want them to apply to me. I want my boyfriend to pick up the car, or I want to do this, or I want you to deliver the car to me for free and all this other stuff, right? And essentially what I'm gonna do is like, I'll deliver the car to you uh, Monday through Friday, but it's gonna cost you. I'm not doing this for free. Like, like I hope this dude didn't lose this key cause I'm gonna hit him over the head for 700 bucks. Cause that's what it's gonna cost me to get a new key. And like go to car Airbnb, dude is way underrated he doesn't get a lot of love he put up a lot of toro videos and because he doesn't look as good as samala's experience and that's something else when someone's sitting there sitting spitting real game because a woman is cute you would rather watch her and like i've watched samara's experience videos and you know i think that she's a decent person you know she's been running the bit toro business for six years but she's never got her own commercial insurance. And see, this is the thing. One, and this is one of the reasons that I needed to get 20 cars. Because the 10 cars, getting your own commercial insurance is crazy expensive. 20 cars, I have an actual fleet. So I'm going to actually put those vehicles on that commercial policy. And at that point, once I get my commercial policy, I won't have cars sitting because I can rent them to anyone. Just go ahead, drop me a rental contract, and you know I can rent this out, and I don't have to share these rental proceeds with Toro or. Uh, and this is something else. I'm working on Toro. I had a car on Toro that I had snoozed. Now, what snooze means that it's unavailable. This car got booked out twice, and I had to cancel the rentals. And Toro has charged me fifty dollars for each cancellation. And I'm going to call them up and be like, look, I want my money because these cars should have never been booked because they were snoozed. And it got to the point, and it was the Range Rover, I actually pulled that Range Rover off of Toro because it kept getting booked. And this this is this is some stuff that no one talks about because it's like, oh, you know, you can do Toro. You can make all this money passively. Bullshit. If you're trying to make some real money, because I've already made $10,000 this month and it looks like we're gonna do 12. Once again, it just depends upon how this these last three days go, but I can move to 14. And one of the goals is getting the majority of the cars rented and also, you know, the majority of the people pay. But I have what I like to call my problem children. And these are people, and like, I'm, I'm going through it right now. This girl, she's got the BMW, and she likes the BMW. And I was like, look, you need to catch up. You need to bring it back. So tomorrow, I am going to send her a demand letter because she doesn't want to respond. And I'm going to send a demand letter because I already know what I got to do. Send the demand letter. And then five days, I was like, hey, I sent you a demand letter. And essentially, if you don't bring the car back, it'll be reported as stolen. If you get caught driving it, you'll be arrested. I'm gonna to have to be ruthless in that regard because every time someone has a car and they doesn't they don't pay me and it, you know stuff happens. You know, you don't have no money, just bring the car back. I'm not gonna chase you, right? But essentially, because the car has been rented out and it's in the 
higher car algorithm, it'll go out really quick. So you're costing me money by keeping the car and not bringing it back. That's costing me a lot of money. So I'm going to get a little bit more ruthless. Uh, I got some people because essentially I got one girl. She's working her butt off because I told her you need to catch up. Or you need to bring the car back. And that's what I'm doing because essentially the two day mark, two days can turn to five. Five days can turn to seven before you know it. Because if they don't feel pressure, like pressure, and one of the things I'm starting to do is when they're late is to communicate with them not once a day, bug the shit out of them. Like, I'm, I'm essentially, once I hire someone, it's like if someone's late, email them every hour on the hour. Every hour on the hour. And if they go ahead and block you, then, you know, we're going to start a process. Because once again, you know, people can hire someone to do this. How am I going to hire someone to do something that I don't really know how it goes fully yet? I know a lot more than I knew two months ago. But essentially, I'm going to have to work this business for four to five months. My assistant, I'm going to teach her how to check in and check out cars. But she only works Monday through Friday. And this can be a seven-day-a-week business if you don't put protocols and standards into place. Because like right now, and the, 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 I only have... 21 cars, 21. To me, that's not a large fleet. And essentially, I am between the people who have two to three or four cars and the folks who have a few hundred. I am like in the middle there. I'm in that middle spot. And once again, car, air, car, B&B, because he has an Airbnb business, He's he spits some real game and the dude doesn't get the views. And I feel because he didn't get the views is why he stopped making the videos. And once again, guys, this is real business. This is how it really goes. I know all of these folks are telling you you can start these businesses and make all this money and not bust a sweat. Be rubbing on big booty Betty's booty and living life and all this other stuff. And um, ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So... Essentially, you guys, this is the real. This is what you need to do. And I'm going to keep doing this because every business that I had a lot of crap, trials, tribulations, I have probably made, I made money from YouTube in two ways. Actual YouTube income. I'm going to say YouTube income maybe 600,000 over 12 years, which comes out to like about 50,000 a year and 7 million from selling courses. So more than that, actually more than that. So YouTube was a pain in the ass in the beginning. But look at the money I made. The storage auction business was a pain in the ass in the beginning. Look at the money I made. So every business that I have started in the beginning has been like this. Because at some point, I'm going to fix everything I can fix on the cars. They're going to stop breaking down. They're just going to go out. And you're going to hear me do a video. It's been three months. It's been four months. It's been five months. It's been six months. It's been seven months. It's been eight months since I've had a breakdown. And also, I'm learning to navigate personalities. I'm getting rid of all of the player bait cars because they ain't nothing but problems. And yeah, this is real business. Guys, I, I, I'm i the bearer of truth. I am someone that has the toys, that has the lifestyle, but I built it by building a real business. And another thing that we're getting ready to do, and I, I talked about Bandman Kevo. Because I think his advice is 100% garbage. I'm getting ready to get in the credit space because essentially no one in the credit space is like, this is how to fix your credit and get stuff off and get credit cards. But no one is designing a format for you to escalate your credit. How Like, th this is a big issue. A lot of these people who rent these cars only have a debit card. They don't have a credit card. And I'm going to do a video where you need to have... Um, 
four, five, six, seven credit cards. Like I got like 40 personal credit cards and I have one, two, three, four business credit cards. So if something happens to one, and this happens kind of all the time, like I'll go to a gas station and I'll put a credit card in it and that credit card will not work at the pump for some reason. Then I'll slide out another one and it works. So you need to have a minimum of four to five credit cards. And you one is your daily driver and the other four are backup. You could just put like Netflix or something on it to keep it active and that's it. But I am surprised at how many people don't have the proper credit card protocols set up. There's a lot of people out here living, like I've had a guy, he lost his, um, two guys, this happened. One guy got robbed. They stole his phone, stole his wallet. Another guy lost his bank card and they had no backup. It's crazy. But that's all I got for you. Um, in July, we're going to get with the corporate papers and we're going to get with um, the credit program. And everyone that is part of the Art of Holding in the corporate toolbox will get access to the new credit program. Once again, you will get access. And the credit program will be a standalone program and some other stuff. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.